Hey everyone, it's Rye Myers, your Broadway and entertainment BFF, and you're watching Live with Rye. Listen, if you get value out of this video, do me a favor, hit that subscribe button and subscribe to my YouTube channel so you never miss an episode of Live with Rye, and so you can see all my other content I post as well. And listen, if you're also getting value out of this video, do me a favor and help and go to ridethenewsguy.com slash donate or click this QR code and help support the show if you are so inclined. Whatever you're able to give means the world to me, but you can head to ridethenewsguy.com slash donate or scan the QR code and donate. You'll also see it scrolling across the bottom of your screen. So throughout the broadcast, if you forget, you can also see it across the bottom of your screen as well. Thanks for your love and support. It means the world to me and I truly cannot do this without you. With that, let's welcome my very special guests. I'm so excited to introduce Rebecca Haley Clark. Hey, Rebecca. Hi, how are you? I'm well, thanks. Thank you so much for taking the time to chat with me today. Of course, thank you for having me on. My pleasure. So you've created something so spectacular. Where did the idea come from to create this new project, Hindsight 2020? Sure, um, I think it really came from you know, the, dealing with the past year um, with all the theaters closing down and wanting to get back in a room with all the creative professionals who haven't had the outlet for the past year. And um, Monica Boker, who is a lighting designer um, in California, wanted to do some kind of fundraiser for Black Lives Matter. And we started talking and then I brought on um, Cree Noble, who's in Chicago and the ball just started rolling. We made some pretty cool prompts and thought, let's look back kind of a year in review, time capsule style, put a lot of artist perspectives together about what's gone on this year. Wow, what an interesting um, topic to, to choose. I mean, obviously it really makes sense but considering that 2020 was some sort of focus of everyone's year, but what a great way to sort of put pen to paper and create it. What, what do you hope that people will take away from um, Hindsight 2020? Um, I hope that they will take away that, you know, theater is not gone. It has just revamped itself um, and everyone's ready to come back as soon as we can um, safely come back to the theater um, to work with each other, but also a space for reflection. Um, we don't pretend to know what this year meant to everyone. We're all just sharing our individual perspectives. And we hope that by sharing that, it encourages everyone else to reflect on what they might have gained from the year and also be okay with the fact that maybe they didn't gain anything at all and they're, they just survived and that's okay. And that's all you can ask really for a lot of people is, you know, surviving. That's, you know, that's really what's uh, most important. And I know for me for a while with 2020, it was like, how you doing surviving? You know, that's the best thing you could do at some points. Yep, absolutely. That's the, that's the minimum and that's the maximum. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. I agree. Where can, uh, so tell me about Hindsight 2020. Where can we watch it and where uh, and what days um, is it available um, to stream and to watch? Absolutely. Um, so we have opening night um, this week, Friday, April 9th, and we have shows um, April 10th and 11th as well. And then the next week on uh, Friday and Saturday, April 16th and April 17th. Um, there's kind of a variety of times. Um, all of them that are listed um, on my website or on the Eventbrite or our GoFundMe page um, are in um, Pacific time. Um, okay. We try to make a variety of shows available because it's an international collaboration. So we want everyone to be able to watch from different parts of the world at a time that's convenient for them. So we have what might be considered a matinee for the um, Pacific time. That also works for UK time evening show, um, and you know for the East Coast um, as well. Chicago, we have people in Mexico and in wow. India. So um, yeah, at seven thirty um, Pacific time on Friday, and then we have um, two matinees on um, this Saturday and Sunday as well. Great. Well, and 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 if you watching, if you have missed this past weekend, you can watch it next weekend, which is great as well. Um, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday as well. Correct. Uh, Friday and Saturday next week. Friday and Saturday, which is wonderful. So there's so many opportunities to watch this. Um, as Rebecca mentioned, you can go to her website right here, and this is where you can um, see everything as far as tickets and times. I love that you've given a wide range of times to sort of accommodate um, for different time zones and for everyone watching as if we were at, in an actual theater in a specific time Absolutely. zone. Absolutely, I have so many friends who are international and when I'm working on things this year, 
you know, I, I've heard many times, oh, that's 4 a.m. my time, that's 3 a.m. my time. I thought, okay, well, let's try to make it as accessible um, as possible um, for everyone to watch. And we're really trying to replicate within the, you know, structure and confines of what this year is, the feeling of being back in the theater, what that longing is to be back in the theater, you know, getting your playbill, going to concessions, getting ready for a show. Yeah. Oh. Well, you just, you even just saying that just makes me uh, even more just miss. We we're so close. I know we were almost there, <laughs> you know, but I, yeah. Oh. Yeah, no, I hear you. I definitely became emotional. Um, uh, we talked in rehearsal about this a lot, watching Moulin Rouge, very end of the show. And the stage manager, if you will, is calling for cur places for curtain call. And there were just so many feelings that I felt about that one simple Phrase. And I think that resonates with a lot of us who are either professionals in the theatrical sphere or who just miss watching it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, oh, it is missed so much by by everyone. And I love that you are doing doing that and doing the respective time zones. Is each performance live or are they are they recorded or? So um, all of our performances are pre-recorded with um, a little live special bit um, at the beginning um, to try and give that live feel, but we wanted to make sure that it was as tight and concise as possible and you know, making sure to cover for any Wi-Fi technology type glitches so that didn't interfere with anyone's um, experience. But a lot of them are you know, one, one take, one shot, um, kind of camera work so that we're really trying to replicate that theatrical feel and we all devise together um, via Zoom and with different assignments and projects. So we we took a, a theatrical approach to it and then it ended up being um, recorded at the end. I love that. I think that is so wonderful and especially that little surprise sort of live bit in the beginning. It's wonderful. And I, I think it's great. I, I, in this digital world, I think it's great that you have made it very tight by making it pre-recorded. Because as we know, you mentioned with the Wi-Fi in this current virtual world we're in, you Zoom is and uh, virtual stuff is <laughs> can, can sometimes be unreliable live. Absolutely. <laughs> so I, I feel you on that. Um, so while 2020 was one of the toughest years for people, I think, sort of in our lifetime, I think in anyone's lifetime in the last 100 years, what was something good that happened to you um, that made you just appreciate life or appreciate um, what you have? Absolutely, yeah, yeah. I think it's super important to remember the, the good parts as well. Um, and I would say, I mean, working on this show has been one of the best, um, remembering what it's like to collaborate with everyone. But on a more personal level, um, I'm back at home, I'm in California, and I've gotten to spend a lot of time with my mom. Oh. And I, I've been away a lot, um, traveling, studying other places. And I think, you know, sometimes, of course, you know, being stuck in the same place again is difficult, but it is really at the end of the day, such a blessing and a privilege to be able to spend so much time together. Mm -hmm. That is wonderful. Yeah, I know there's so many people who appreciate this time with their family and who have traveled sort of so much like you and being able to just see the, the, their loved ones, that means a lot to them. So that's wonderful. You yeah. mentioned traveling. I have to mention you just recently finished, um, I believe it was your master's in the, oh, I'm going to get this wrong, Royal, the uh, Royal Conservatory in Scotland? Yeah, the Royal Conservatory of Scotland is where, um, yeah, Maybe I got my master's in. Um, what, right. was, what was that like to get your master's there, but also just in the UK itself, sort of home to Shakespeare and to sort of the original, really the birth of what we know of theater with the Shakespearean times and everything and Scotland being so historic. What was that like to um, travel there and to get to get your masters um, in sort of in that, in that place? Um, amazing, um, in one word. Um, actually, um, I believe seven of the collaborators who are working on this project also went to the Royal Conservatoire of Scotland. So we've got a heavy contingency there, um, but it was absolutely fantastic. It was a, a year long program and being able to learn so much about Scotland, such a wonderful country. Um, I've been watching a lot of 
Men in Kilts recently on Stars, um, trying to you know recapture that feel. Um, it's absolutely beautiful, but there's such a vibrant theatrical um, community there right. that I don't think people know um, because at least the outside international focus is always on Edinburgh during the you know Fringe Festival one month out of the year, but the rest of the year. Um, Glasgow, where I was, is such a, it's thriving. There's so many shows to see. And then London, not being so far away, is also a great resource and opportunity to see shows. Um, I was able to see so many things and they have such a different appreciation for theater in the UK. Um, it almost feels like going to a movie, like that's how accessible it is. That people, wow. oh, you're going to a show, going to theater, you know. And um, we also got to spend, um, as part of the program, a, a one month residency at the Globe actually in um, in London. And I'm such a huge Shakespeare fan since I was like, I was gonna say a wee kid, you know, uh, putting that Scottish lingo. Yes, yes. <laughs> but um, that was absolutely fantastic as well and such a great resource of the program. And yeah, I desperately, you know, um, miss my, my time there um, in Scotland and feel very grateful to been able to spend so long, you know, especially Pre, uh, pre pandemic times um, there and get to really fully explore the entire country. You know, I am, uh, I'm so jealous in a, in a good way because, you know, side note, I, I'm, and it's probably not going to happen until 2022, but I never been to Europe and one of my top places is England, specifically Scotland. I want to do London, Scotland, and Ireland. And I'm, you know, currently just, chatting with travel agents and just sort of, you know, seeing what the future holds and what, but I love Brit British history so much. I love Scotland so much. And so just even hearing you talk about that, just, oh, it just makes me so excited for the future um, because there is, so, you know, I want to experience the, obviously the theater in London, but there's so much just rich history and uh, birthplaces of so much, of so many things. Um, and to see other things other than just Edinburgh, you know, there's Glasgow, which has so much stuff. So that's wonderful to hear. And I'm sure that being there only helped strengthen you as a creative um, in your work in theater. Absolutely. I mean, um, I've traveled a lot with, um, and been able to make work in um, many countries. Um, I did a project in Brazil. I've done um, study and work in um, Greece. Mm -hmm. And being able to see all the differences, but also all the similarities is, I think, the more interesting facet is that we're all just trying to communicate, you know, talk about the human experience and connect to one another. And Rai, when you need travel, you know, recommendations, just hit me up and I got you. <laughs> I will. I will. Yeah. It's like I was, oh, I was so excited. I, had, I was originally, had originally, when I was thinking, I thought maybe I'll be able to go this fall. You know, I thought November, but then I was saying, I thought, you know what? even if it's safe to travel, I feel like a lot still may be closed or social distance. I said, let me give it a year. Maybe next October will be better and everything will be open. And, you know, so, but I'm looking forward to it whenever I book it. I, it's one of my, I want to do sort of the whole, the whole tour of those two countries. So, yeah, take your time. Yeah. yeah. That's what, that's, that's what I said. I was like, I'm, you know, the plan is to sort of spend like 14 to 17 days there and just, you know, take it all in. Um, so I'm like, Oh, so that's, I, I, I'm living vicariously through through what you were saying. So I hear you. Yeah. I'll help you plan your whole itinerary. Amazing. amazing. So how, um, how can the theater community continue its efforts to be more fair, diverse, and equitable industry for everyone as we come out of this time and out of the reckoning that, you know, 2020 brought, how do we continue as theater makers, as creators um, to be more, equitable and fair and, you know, understand that there's room at the table for everyone and make that happen. Yeah, um, I think a lot of it starts from the ground up. I mean, it's one thing to show stories that um, have a diverse cast or are about diverse themes, mm -hmm. but um, what happens when you have a, let's call it a diverse story, but it's not being made by a diverse crew, um, diverse writers in the room, production team, lighting, um, you really need the whole kit and caboodle <laughs> right. um, with diversity. And I think how we can continue to help is spe specifically in education and um, internships, mentorships, we need to provide the young people with the tools and also the confidence 
to know that they will be accepted, that there will be work for them. Um, because it's very hard to come up through a system of education and then there's one thing you can do, you know, two right. things you can do. Um, and just like speaking from my own experience, um, I want to be known, I mean, I'm, I, I'm a mixed, I'm biracial, um, um, I'm a black woman as well. And that identity, you know, is infused into all of my work just inherently, but I don't want to be necessarily just known as a black creator. Um, I want to be able to do work that spans, you know, the spectrum of availability and they just don't call me in to do, you know, one sort of thing because I think that um, particularly for, for white creators, you know, everything is at your, your disposal. And I think we have to hold true also, you know, creators of color to know that we can do anything, we can direct Shakespeare, we can direct um, whatever we want. Um, as well, and I think self self esteem and confidence is a huge um, part of it. But for allies looking to help, um, it's giving back and it's taking the time to look into things that you might not be so comfortable with or aware of. And if you're not looking for those resources because they're out there, um, we just you know sometimes we have a little bit of a veil um, over ourselves and. We need to just widen our vision a little bit. Yeah, no, we we really do. And I, I appreciate you sharing all of that. And that's one of the things that I liked about with uh, Hindsight 2020, you do, you have a, a diverse cast and just, it seems like everyone from all over, which was, you know, all walks of life and all backgrounds, it seems. And that's wonderful. That was so wonderful to see. Did that, um, in creating this and in rehearsals, you know, did that help a lot with having, you know, um, a cast from all different backgrounds and um, all different walks of life um, coming together for Hindsight 2020 for you as a director and creator? Yes, um, it was very important to us when we were putting out our uh, call um, call to action mm -hmm. um, that we had build as diverse um, a collaboration group um, as possible, especially because we were going to be devising um, but because it's about individual stories, you know, through um, uh, the connection of 2020, I yeah. can't speak to what someone else experienced and they can't speak to what I experienced. So having as many voices that are different in the room, I think only helps to strengthen the piece. And um, once again, find our similarities and our connections uh, with each other. It's almost like the wider it gets, the smaller it gets at the same time. Yeah, no, and that's and that's an important sort of dimension of that, I, I think. And with, uh, you know, Hindsight 2020 is the hope to, you know, is this just a sort of a one time, you know, want to do it um, in a Zoom sort of paradox? Or do you hope to maybe take this and be able to do it at a, um, you know, a theater one day or do it more? Is, or does this um, concept just work more in sort of a virtual landscape? No, I think it definitely can have a life outside of the Zoom and in the, in the theater just because of our um, devising um, process. It might be a little difficult to get all of these same people in the same room, but we're open to it. Um, yeah. We definitely see this as like the first step, showing you what we have, what we've been developing together to see what the next step would be, what the next iteration could be and then maybe hopefully flying everybody out to I don't know Scotland or Chicago or somewhere where we can all meet in person for the first time because there are a lot of people that I've never met um, yeah. that I've been working with um, and hopefully create something but I think it could be very easily translated to um, a live physical space. Oh that's great to hear and it's so cool that you have there's a lot of people you haven't met that's Real, I, I thought you all knew each other. That's really awesome that there's- No, I, I know some people, most people have some kind of connection to me, if not to um, each other. Right. But um, specifically like my main collaborator, um, Cree Noble, who I've been working with since last summer, pretty much. We've never met in the real world. She's been in Chicago the whole time, I've been in California. <laughs> and we, we finally ended up in one conversation one time where we said, how, t how tall are you? Um, because we only see each other, you know, from the torso right. pretty much most of the time that we've been talking. 
<laughs> yeah, and, and I'm sure even when you see each other, it's going to be like, what? Like, I know for me, there's been, you know, there's been people who I've only just seen on digital and I see them in person and it's like, oh, you're a human. You have legs. You, you, you what? Oh, wow. I forgot. I didn't you're know. You're real. <laughs> it's like, oh, I didn't know you were so tall. I didn't know you were so, so short. <laughs> That's great. Well, I wish this all the best and I hope there's many iterations to come. What advice do you have for people who want to produce and direct their first projects? You know, maybe they're brand new to the world of producing and directing and they don't know where to begin or haven't done it before. What um, advice would you give to them? Um, I would say first you need an idea um, and you have to be passionate about it. Um, and excited because you're usually the you know the one carrying that torch for the idea to wherever it may lead you. Um, maybe learning just a bit about budgeting um, would be very helpful um, to know that. But passion is the thing that really gets things off the ground, gets everything started. And um, learning about collaboration, um, picking a good team of people. Who will be there to support you it doesn't you don't have to know everything technically you don't have to know everything um we have you know phd in stage design you don't need that to start you just need an idea and some people who are willing to work with you and who you like to work with yeah and you'll figure things out um together i know that can be kind of vague and still sound a little um overwhelming just to yeah. start with. But so many things start out that way. One of um, one of the people on the piece, um, Cody Holiday Hafner, um, we've worked. We went to school together um, in New York, and I was his assistant director. Now I'm directing him. We've gone, you know, back and forth, and it's just so lovely to watch people um, grow in their crafts, discover new things, and it's great to be able to work with a friend that you mm -hmm. trust. And so, if you have good friends. Um, that's a really great place to, to start with a project. I think that's such great advice, really. That That is wonderful. And it's not vague at all. I think it it really, it, it's important. Collaboration and having that idea, it's, it's what makes it um, a project become what it is. So can can you tell me about this, uh, the Santa Cruz Shakespeare um, coming up? I, I saw on your website, you start in the summer of 2021, I believe it is. You'll be a part of it. Can you tell me about the Santa Cruz Shakespeare um, that you'll be a part of? Sure. Um, so uh, Santa Cruz Shakespeare, um, they do outdoor Shakespeare performances for many years um, here in Santa Cruz, where I'm a local, where I've grown up. Um, and Mike Ryan, who's the um, artistic director there, I mean, I've literally like watched shows, <laughs> wanted to be a part of it since I was younger, I, was, I guess hoping more to be an actor. Um, <laughs> and when I returned home, um, we got in contact. I was supposed to work um, on their their fringe show in 2020, but you know, obviously that was canceled. So we're in talks now to see how I can be a part of their season as they're you know taking their first steps out into the back into the theatrical outside world, mm -hmm. um, and possibly maybe like assistant directing or collaborating with. They also have a great. Um, they're planning on launching a like a social justice involved with Shakespeare and education. Oh, um, initiative. So hopefully being a part of that, but we're, we're still finalizing um, the details of that, but it's the, really the intersection of, I would say my, my work, I have, you know, a degree in um, drama and theater arts, but also ethnicity and race studies. So where race and performance intersect is kind of my wheelhouse. And um, fortunately enough with, as you're mentioning the reckoning in 2020 with that, a lot of things coming to light where I feel like I can also be most of service and most um, helpful to the theater community and bridging that gap and helping us to move forward into a more equitable space. I love that. That is really important and so wonderful. And I'm so, so glad that you are helping to lead the way in that. It's, it's important. Where can we keep up with you and follow you on Instagram, Twitter, the social Net, the social networking spaces, where can we keep up with you? Sure. Um, probably the best is on my Instagram, which is Bex in the city, three, three, three. Um, that was for my days living in New York. I um, love it. What a clever name. Um, my, my roommate at the time, actually, when I moved, she said, are you still going to be Bex in the city if you're not in the city anymore? <laughs> yes, I will. I love um, it. 
And yeah, so Instagram is probably the best place to keep up with me. Also on my website, um, uh, Rebecca Haley Clark. Dot com yeah. and yeah hindsight 2020 is um where you can see more about the project but i've also got my bio and i'll keep yes. trying to update about upcoming things that i'm working on yeah if you go to the website and you go to the hindsight 2020 you just click and you'll see her the home page and everything there so um make sure you click around and see all of her projects thank you no go ahead continue i just wanted to let them oh. Yeah, no, I mean, um, I've also got Twitter, um, which is linked um, also on my website um, as well. Um, and those are probably the best spaces um, to get in contact with me. It's got contact information on my website um, as well. Maybe I know anyone's interested <laughs> in collaborating on the next thing. Yeah, well, if you're interested, reach out to Rebecca. You can go to RebeccaHaleyClark.com. And for more about Hindsight 2020, to get tickets, to learn more, go to RebeccaHaleyClark.com slash hindsight slash 20 dash 2020. I will say they also have a GoFundMe um, as well. That's super important. That's helping to raise money and funds to um, go towards supporting the actors and creatives in this process. So if you're on the website, uh, be sure to definitely um, take a look at the GoFundMe if you're able to contribute. Um, I'm sure they would appreciate that as well. well. And Rebecca, before we go, are there any sort of final thoughts, anything I didn't touch on that you may want to... Uh, that I didn't get to touch on? Um, just also just about our tickets that they're offered um, at a, a pay what you can rate. Um, so we're trying to um, suggest a donation is $15, but we're trying to make it, you know, we want as many people to see it as possible. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, just like you said, right, you know, our main fundraising is trying to go providing a, a living minimum wage to the people who have been working on it, but we're also donating 25% um, of our proceeds to um, nonprofit organizations, um, to people who are um, most affected by um, the COVID-19 pandemic and or um, vulnerable um, populations. So anything that you give to us will also be going to um, those organizations which are also listed on the website. I think that's so important and so wonderful that you're doing that and giving portions to um, those communities and those people who most need it. Well, listen, if you wanna keep up with me and you wanna see what I'm doing, be sure to also follow me on social media. I'm at Rye Myers on Instagram and Twitter, and you can find me on Facebook, official uh, Rye Myers on Facebook. Listen, Rebecca, thank you so much. As a reminder to everyone too, if you're so inclined and if you'd like to help donate and support the show, you can go to ridethenewsguy.com slash donate. Rebecca, thank you again. I'm really excited to um, see this. I can't wait to watch it. And I love what you've created. And I think it's something so so special. Thank you so much for having me today. And it was great to talk with you. Um, and thanks for, you know, helping us to get the word out um, about the show. And I hope you all come see it. And um, yeah, keep up with it. Amazing. Yes, yes, you have tons of time to go see it. So definitely go watch it. Thank you so much, Rebecca. Thank you.